So you're gonna understand that by literally anything, it includes devils, monsters, chimera, and even imaginary walls and sheets of cloth. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. If you're a fan of Japanese anime and manga culture, I'm pretty sure you know about yokai. They are literally everywhere, from Natsume Yujincho to Inuyasha, Furari Hyo no Mago, and recently, Kimetsu no Yaiba. However, when yokai are explained in English, I've seen some translations that describe them as Japanese ghosts. To be honest, this translation is not accurate. Japan has its original culture of ghosts called Yure, which also appear in many anime and manga too. But can you explain how yokai and the Japanese ghosts Yure are different? So today, as a big fan of yokai and Yure manga myself, I will explain about the three main differences between them. After watching today's video, I'm sure you'll be able to enjoy anime and manga based on them even more. Also, at the end of the video, I will introduce three other names of Japanese demons and ghosts that I'm sure you've heard of somewhere before. So I hope you can stay with me till the end. And even if you get confused somewhere during the middle, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video in today's conclusion. One, there are definitions. To make long stories short, yokai represents all the mysterious things that people cannot imagine. And yure represents the souls of the passed away that still have regrets to the real world. If you take a look at their kanji characters, it'll be easier to understand and remember the meaning. Yokai is written like this in Japanese. It's very interesting that both of these kanji are read ayashi, and both mean suspicious, doubtful, and dubious. That's a lot of suspiciousness. So for any phenomena, like natural disasters, sicknesses, or just the sound of squeaking floor at night that the people of the past couldn't explain, they gave a name and called it a yokai. It is thought that this is because Japan's original religion, Shintoism, is a polytheism, believing that even inanimate things have souls in them. On the other hand, yure is written like this in Japanese. The first kanji character, yu, means imprisonment or confinement, and re means spirit. An imprisoned spirit, yure. Easy to remember, right? For example, in some famous ghost stories, a woman killed by her husband becomes a yure to get revenge on him and the others around him. So, yokai has a very broad meaning, and it can literally be anything from items like umbrellas, animals like cats, or even human-shaped like yukionna. While yure are a kind of yokai, there are ghosts with grudges that were once living humans. Two, their histories. Next, let's take a look at each history to have a clear image of both of them. The history of yokai can be traced back to ancient times. In Japan's oldest history books, Kojiki and Nihonshoki. Coming into the medieval times around the 12th century, pictures of them began to be drawn due to the advent of picture scrolls and books. One of the famous pictures would be Hyakkiyako Emaki, where the yokai were drawn as small pet-like characters. In the peaceful Edo period, the culture of horror storytelling became popular as a kind of entertainment. 
it was something like going to watch a horror movie today. In order to continue entertaining their audience, the storytellers created new stories by translating Chinese novels and mixing folk tales and stories together. Also, yokai became the motif for toys, as well as themes of pictures for the ukiyo-e artists to draw. Today, the image of yokai are not just scary, but also cool and cute, like Inuyasha and Yokai Watch. And they still continue to entertain us like they have since ancient times. On the other hand, Yure appeared in history slightly afterwards in the Heian period in some literature. However, unlike the yokai, even after the invention of picture scrolls and books, there weren't any images of them written yet. Instead, there were plays in Japanese theater art, no theater about them from the Romachi period. Coming into the peaceful Edo period, when the horror storytelling became popular, stories and pictures of yure were created too. The concrete image of both the yokai and yure created at this period are still the images we have of them today. Although the two share quite similar histories, you can understand that yokai have been enjoyed by the people slightly longer. This is my speculation, but this is probably because while most people knew from ancient times that yokai were imaginary things, yure were once people who actually existed. So in the past, they might have been truly scared that they could curse you to death. And it wasn't considered something to enjoy talking about. Three, their appearances. It's quite easy to distinguish their differences if we take a look at their appearances. There are mainly three things that the yure share. One, appear the same way they died. Two, no legs. Three, haunt certain people. The yure will appear in front of the people they grudge, just the way they died. This is why many yure images are wearing white kimono and a triangular bandage, which are clothes that dead bodies would be dressed before they are cremated in Japan. Also, yure do not have legs and they're constantly floating. There are many theories about why they are described this way. For example, because spirits are closer to God, or the dead will get their legs cut off in hell. But no one knows for sure. Because yure are spirits of humans that became ghosts due to their regrets, they only haunt certain people that they grudge, or stay in places where their regrets are the strongest. Even if they appear in front of unrelated people, they would usually do no harm. In some stories, the yure will find peace thanks to some people, listening to their stories or relieving their pain. While the yure have very concrete conditions, again, literally anything can be considered a yokai. They will appear anywhere from mountains, forests, rivers, to even schools, and will haunt or attack anyone that invades their territory or gets them in a bad mood. Let me give you some examples of famous yokai to understand how unique they can be. 1. Oni A demon, devil yokai with horns and fangs. 2. Kappa A yokai that lives near the waters and is believed to be gods or sometimes servants to water and loves cucumbers. Three. Tengu, a yokai with a red face, long nose, and sometimes with beaks and wings that are believed to be gods, devils of certain mountains. 4. Rokurokubi, a woman yokai that can stretch her neck to an unbelievable length. 5. Nue, a yokai with a monkey's face, a raccoon's body, tiger's limbs, and snake's tail. 6. Nurikabe, 
a wall yokai that is said to block people's path walking at night. 7. Ittan momen. A yokai in a form of sheet of cotton that is about 10 meters in length and 30 centimeters in width and attacks people at dusk. So you're gonna understand that by literally anything, it includes devils, monsters, chimera, and even imaginary walls and sheets of cloth. The only thing they have in common is that they are all something strange, representing their name as a yokai. Then, let's take a look at the three other names of Japanese demons and ghosts that you might have heard before somewhere. They are 1. Obake 2. Mononoke 3. Onryo 1. Obake First of all, obake means a figure or shape that deviates significantly from the normal state. A paranormal existence, which is something that you are not used to seeing. So it is a word that can refer to the yokai and yure that we have been talking about today. However, obake focuses more on that it's something strange or frightening that you usually wouldn't see. It's easier to remember this if you keep in mind that the verb form bakeru means appear in disguise in the first place. This is why the haunted houses of amusement parks in Japan are called obake yashiki. 2. Mononoke Next, mononoke refers to grudges and spirits that appear in Japanese classics and folk beliefs and cause people to suffer or die. Yes, the mononoke of princess mononoke. While most people use it as the same definition as yokai, some point out that their nature is closer to yure, who have grudges towards someone. But the spirit is not that of a human, but something bigger, like a supernatural being. 3. Onryo Onryo is a ghost that has a grudge towards someone or something. While they are regarded as a kind of yure, if you take a closer look at their kanji, you can notice the differences. Onryo is written like this in Japanese. The first kanji literally means grudge, and the second is the same as yure, meaning spirit. Yure means an imprisoned spirit, so the image is more focused on the spirit suffering from the regrets or grudges. On the other hand, as you can understand from the stories of the movies about them, onryo are much more fierce, and they are not willing to have any conversations with anyone. They will attack anyone or anything that will get in their way of revenge. If you see a ghost with monstrous faces and chasing horrified people in movies, there's a high chance that it's a onryo. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I explained about the three main differences between yokai and yure, the Japanese demons and ghosts. One, their definitions. Yokai stands for all the mysterious things that people can't imagine. And yure stands for human souls that cannot find peace because of their regrets and grudges. Yokai can literally be any suspicious phenomenon, while yure must be a formal living human that became a ghost. 2. Their histories. Yokai first appeared in Japan's oldest history books, written in the 8th century, while yure has a slightly shorter history and first appeared in the late Heian period. They both became very popular during the Edo period, when storytelling of horror became very popular as entertainment. The images created at this period are passed on to modern-day Japan. 3. Their appearances Yure have mainly three common conditions. 1. Appear the same way they died. 2. No legs. 3. Haunt certain people. 
Yokai can literally have any kind of appearance from devils, monsters, chimera, and even imaginary walls and sheets of cloth. I explained about the three other names related to demons and ghosts in Japan. Obake, Ononoke, Onryo. Obake means a figure or shape that deviates significantly from the normal state, including yokai and yure. Mononoke refers to grudges and spirits that appear in Japanese classics and folk beliefs and cause people to suffer or die. Onryo stands for a ghost that has a terrible grudge against someone or something, a spirit much more fierce than a yure. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understandings towards the culture of yokai and Japanese ghosts, please hit the like button to let me know. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you